Thank God you showed up when you did. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> God. Today we were talking about maybe taking that under drain somewhere out this way. Yeah, exactly. Is that still your thought process? I think so because like you had mentioned, we had uh, electric and everything over in that section. So what we want to do, once this is filled with water, I'm not worried about it because we're going to have enough pressure on top of the liner to hold everything in place. The challenge is going to be if they ever go to drain the pond. So during the spring cleaning, maintenance and things like that, if you drain the water down, you have high ground water, it's going to want to start everything to float up. So what we want to do is we want to have a path of least resistance that's going to go into a sump pit. They can turn that pump on, they can evacuate all the water out, and they can keep that pump running throughout the entire process until they get water back inside of here. So again, we're just thinking ahead of things. Um, it will help us a little bit in construction, but actually not that much. So right now, these guys are doing is they're digging out. They're, this recessed area is going to be where the two pump vaults sit and we will wrap aqua blocks around them as well as on the back side. We'll cut two one third section of a small aqua block to wrap the back because we intend on having infiltration. As you can see, we've modified the back uh, to allow for more water to be accepted into the pump vaults because of the flow rate of the pumps. So I want to get some small aqua blocks back behind, not only to kind of protect the structural integrity of the pump vaults because I don't want a bunch of stuff packed up against it and worry about these plastic pump vaults caving in on the back side but also with those aqua blocks along this back side they're gonna allow for water infiltration to come in through the back in the event that we should ever need it so what they're gonna do is they're gonna dig this pocket down to the same elevation as the top of this boot portion of the pump vault and then that way the bottom of the aqua blocks will sit right on top of this portion of the pump vault once we get the area dug out and excavated cleaned up we'll drop the pump vaults back in there show you what the footprint of the aqua blocks look like before we get the liner and all that stuff in so you have a very good idea as to what that configuration looks like. So here is the general layout of our intake bay. This is going to be the pumping system for the rest of the water features. So we'll have our wetland filter over there and then our large pooling area for the waterfalls back there. And then we will have some plumbing that'll be ran along this back edge for jets. However, each pump will have a pump vault dedicated to itself. So you can see we ran a series of four small aqua blocks out in front, one on each side over there, and then we cut one aqua block into thirds and put two of them along the back sides of this. So what'll happen is when we backfill all of this, we're not gonna have any undue pressure on the back side of the pump vaults with the excavated soil or whatever we're gonna use to backfill behind the liner and through here isn't going to start depressing in on the back side of these pump vaults. Plus, I wanted as much infiltration area as I could get. As you saw, I put all the extra holes and cut the remaining slots that were on the back side of these pump vaults and open those up down in there so that we can get as much water into these pump vaults as possible because we have an 18,000 gallon per hour pump and then a 12,000 gallon per hour pump. So there's gonna be close to 30,000 gallons that needs to get into these pump vaults per hour. So it's also why we cut this as wide as we did. Be very capable of manipulating the width of the opening and setting the weir height to create the correct amount of draw based on the thickness of the water, the width of the water based on the flow rate of the pump so that we're not sacrificing anything else aesthetically or functionally with circulation in through here. So I just wanted to take a second and a breath to show you this. You can see excavation is going extremely well. Mike's like a ninja on that machine up there. So right now we are currently digging everything down to a two foot depth. This is our three foot area right here. We are going to attempt to get down to a four and a half foot depth back down in this area and through here. So once he gets done cleaning up this two foot area, we are going to go through, mark out another shelf to go to three feet, and then we'll mark that four and a half foot section. And I think what we'll probably end up doing is sloping it back down hard that way and making the deep section back over there. So it's a nice gradual slope down to that four and a half foot depth. So that's where we're at. Sounds like we've got Sean, who we saw earlier in the video, gonna be coming by, checking in on the progress, as well as bringing us some lunch. I know it's only a matter of time before Q up there in the machine, so it's getting angry. You can already see the look on his face. It's super intense. Yep, there he is. Look at him. He can't even think right now because he's so hungry. 
So you got Trevor down there from Team Aqua Escape. He's on the tech department, along with who you saw earlier in the video, and he is just busting his butt, trying to get as much of this dirt out of here as possible. You've got Jason in the machine. Things are coming together. I am loving the progress. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll get the whole pond excavated before the end of the day, get our French trains in for that under drain system, and that's really where I think we'll probably let off the gas and give us a good starting or jumping off point in the morning, but we'll see. Ed has not shown up yet. His flight, I think, just landed from Chicago, so we'll see, but it's looking incredible right now. I love the progress. We are down to that three foot depth, and just in time, our guest of honor shows up. You got it. Perfect. Perfect timing, right? All the hard work's done? No, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. You know that. No, I do. How was your flight, Eddie? It was uneventful. Oh, good. Yeah, nice, quiet, quiet, quiet morning over at O'Hare today, and mm -hmm. It's a long cab ride down, that's it. <laughs> so how do you feel about the progress that you've seen just walking in? What's your wow. initial reaction? It's awesome. I mean, you guys got it all the way down to that, uh, you get that deep section done. You got the aqua blocks and everything ready. Yeah, I mean, I think everything was great. The only concern I have is starting to see a little groundwater down on the bottom. Yeah. That could be a little trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, typical Florida, right? Well, we're gonna let Ed get acclimated to the job site and we will be right back with his remediation techniques for the groundwater. <laughs> Okay, folks, I want you to take just a very tiny second during this video and appreciate the gold that we're about to give you. So as you can see behind me, the intake area has now gotten significantly larger to make room for more small aqua blocks in this pump intake area. So Ed got here, so I'm gonna actually have him step aside and explain to you the reasoning on why we are making this area bigger. Thank God you showed up when you did. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank God. Okay, so we have since talked amongst ourselves, yep. and I see you standing on top of some small aqua blocks. So <laughs> what we're talking about doing is we're gonna make it bigger. Always the case, looking at everything, starting to go over the numbers, pull up the specs on the pumps we have. We have a 12,000 GPH pump and an 18,000. It's a lot of water flow for a pond of this size, but we also want really, really good water quality. So again, a recreational pond, a little bit different animal than your standard decorative backyard water garden or even a koi pond. It's gonna have more filtration the customers are looking for very very high water quality so because of that we need high water flow so one of the pumps is going to feed the wetland the second it's also going to split off and go into the jets the second pump is actually just going to feed the main waterfall but because of that we have a total flow rate of almost 30,000 gallons per hour so we have our pump faults going down inside of here so the calculation that I always use is I try to have one minute's worth of water inside of the aqua blocks so that's a safety factor that's going to allow for a certain percentage of the aqua blocks getting clogged up. We're also covering the entire system with rock and gravel. So by doing that, we're taking out 80 plus percent of the surface area. Again, look at the top of this thing. Um, it's designed for high water flow, but now you cover it up with rock and gravel. Now you just have all those little spaces in between that rock and gravel to allow the water to flow through it. So because of that, we wanna have high velocity flowing through. It's gonna allow sediments and accumulation to occur on the on the top. Then the water's gonna open up and it's gonna, uh, it's gonna start to build up inside of there. We don't want a hydraulic imbalance. When you start doing that, you're gonna start fighting the pump. When you do that, then it's just gonna be the crash of the entire system. So what we're doing, we're gonna change out the small aqua blocks to large aqua blocks. So now what we have to do is we have to dig this area out deeper. We have to go another nine inches deeper, so that will compensate for that. Once the aqua blocks go deeper, now the pump vault has to go another seven inches on top of that. So by doing all these little tricks, we're gonna have 500 gallons of storage inside the aqua box. Those pump vaults will be recessed down below. From there, the water will get drawn into our pumping system, which is outside of the actual structure, then it will be delivered into strategic locations in and around the entire pond. And you came to that 500 gallons of storage, basically dividing the 30,000 gallons by 60 minutes, correct? Correct. So, because you want it, you want to have enough storage in here for an intake bay for one minute's worth one of minute's water. One worth of water. So 30,000 GPH divided by 60, that's going to give us 500 gallons a minute. We have to have 500 gallons of storage. Now there's two different ways to do that. We could do small aqua blocks, which is 17 gallons per aqua block, or we could just bump up to the large one. So if we did smalls, we'd have to have 32 small aqua blocks. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna increase it to the large aqua blocks. It's gonna be a lot more efficient as well as cost effective. Look at that. Look at it. 
every bit of like 13, 14 feet long. So Ed, I think one thing that you and I definitely agree on without even having to talk about it, how incredible of a job the Earthworks guys do at incorporating wood elements into their water features. So Absolutely. seeing their uh, portfolio of projects that they've done, new and old, yep. they've just it's always kind of been a signature staple of theirs. Yep. And when we've worked with them down here, it seems like they're always incorporating and bringing us these incredible pieces of wood. Yep. Um, why don't you speak to that as artists that they are, but also how it influences design and how it overall strengthens the design. Well, what I love about it from a design perspective. I mean, check out everything around us. So you don't want to go in and throw in big logs and stuff like that if you're in a prairie. Yeah. If you're in an area where there's no natural logs or trees or anything like that, it doesn't make sense. It's like having that bridge that goes to nowhere. So you want to utilize it and have that uh, kind of thought process. So here down this part of Florida, I got incredible live oak trees. I mean, just looking around at these things, just spectacular. So by adding that wood element in, it just kind of sells that. We're always talking about the illusion of design. We're trying to create naturalistic water features. And by doing that, we want to utilize natural materials. One of those is going to be logs. When you come across natural waterways, you're going to find down trees and logs, especially in this area, because it's a hurricane area. So when hurricanes come ripping through this place, they're taking down trees all the time. So that's a natural part of the marshes and the swamps and the intercoastal areas. It's exactly why, why we want to do it here. The other thing that I want to talk about, and again, I'm going to get into a little bit of the science behind this stuff. When you start putting in a different element like wood versus just having all the rock, you're going to have different organisms associated with it. That is known as para Parafighting. Parafighting is organisms growing on a plant material, growing on wood, growing on plants, growing on debris and things like that. So by adding that other element, you're going to have completely different species of organisms that are associated with wood versus epilithic organisms, which are associated with stone or rock and gravel. So by having that mixture, um, it's going to help to diversify everything. When we're talking about biological diversity, when we're talking about the health of an ecosystem, it's important to have that diversity. So by having these different elements in there, it's going to make a more stable environment that's what it's all about that's biomimicry at its finest you know it <laughs> it's awesome great job Okay, so there is the finished excavation for the intake bay. We are going to get all of this buttoned up tomorrow once we have all the aqua blocks. And we also have this area down here, which was kind of going to be our piece de resistance based on how much groundwater we were going to take on. You can see we've started to slope it down to that four and a half foot depth. We're going to over dig all this. It really doesn't make any sense to do that today because we need to get gravel and get all that stuff buttoned up relatively quickly. So rather than farting around with it today, we're going to go ahead and leave it as is and then finish excavating all this in the morning to get it prepped and ready to go so that we can get our under drain in here and Ed, today we were talking about maybe taking that under drain somewhere out this way yeah exactly that's still your thought process I think so because like you had mentioned we had uh, electric and everything over in that section so what we want to do once this is filled with water I'm not worried about it because we're gonna have enough pressure on top of the liner to hold everything in place the challenge is gonna be if they ever go to drain the pond so during the spring cleaning maintenance and things like that if you drain the water down you have high ground water it's gonna want to start everything to float up. So what we want to do is we want to have a path of least resistance that's going to go into a sump pit. They can turn that pump on, they can evacuate all the water out, and they can keep that pump running throughout the entire process until they get water back inside of here. So again, we're just thinking ahead of things. Um, it will help us a little bit in construction, but actually not that much. So once we get this built tomorrow, we're going to get the liner, we're going to get the gravel, we're going to get the drain in place, we're going to start building directly on top of it. And as soon as we get this lower section rocked in, we should actually start putting water in here to put some of that positive pressure on top of the liner to hold it in place. <laughs> Boys, good job today. Good job, good job today. We'll be back tomorrow. tomorrow.